Hey everyone, this is Mike Benarski with thegadgetsite.com and today I'm going to do a demonstration of iOS 5 which is the next major uh, operating system update that will power on the iPhone, iPod Touch, and the iPad. And so we'll jump right in. Uh, the first major thing I want to talk about is the setup. You don't need to plug it into the computer in order to set it up in iTunes. Uh, setup actually happens right on the device so you don't need a computer, you don't need iTunes. What you will need is an internet connection so it will register, but after you do that, uh, the rest of the stuff takes place on the device, and the setup is actually the same. Um, everything that it asked you in iTunes, it just now asks you on the device. So that brings me to my next thing, which is Wi-Fi sync, and basically you're just able to sync with iTunes wirelessly, so you don't need to plug in your device. It all happens over the air which, uh, like I said, is another very welcomed update. And that also uh, kind of paves the way for iCloud, which is something else that Apple kind of introduced. And uh, you can also have the choice of syncing between iTunes or iCloud. So the biggest change in iOS 5 is the way that it handles notifications. Notifications are now much less obtrusive and are more pleasant. A big change to notifications in iOS 5 is the Notification Center. You can just slide down the notification just like that, and all your notifications that you have accumulated will appear in there. And notifications are just about from any application, and you no longer are going to get those big blue boxes that kind of just blocked your entire view of everything. Uh, they were really obtrusive before, but now you have the option of either no notification, a banner that will appear at the top, or an alert uh, through the blue box. So you can still if you liked that blue box, you can still turn that on, uh, but I, I'm assuming most people will be choosing banners because they're much more pleasant and they still notify you of stuff. And then uh, notifications will also appear on the lock screen. So I'm just going to do a little demonstration of what this all looks like. Alright, so I'm sending a test email. Alright, so my device is locked. And if you heard that, there is a notification right there. And uh, the cool thing is, if it's on the lock screen, what you're able to do is you can either slide to read, or you could also, if you have multiple notifications, this is just going to be a slide to unlock. And then you can slide the actual notification, and it will open up the email. Uh, so that's pretty cool that you're able to control notifications uh, right from uh, your lock screen. And also, uh, you can take advantage of Notification Center. So let me just go into a full screen app. We'll go into Carcassonne. All right, so we're in a full screen app here. And from any application, you can pull down the Notification Center and see your notifications. So here's my notification about uh, this mail message that I have. Now, the only one pet peeve I have about the notifications is that you cannot delete emails. I would find that to be a very nice feature to be able to delete emails right from Notification Center. Uh, so hopefully Apple can add that before the final release of iOS 5. Now something that really bothers me with the notification system is that there's no way of telling that there's a notification without pulling down the Notification Center. So something that I think Apple needs to change uh, before the final release, they need to add some kind of little notification on the status bar saying, hey, you have a notification that you should look at. And that little icon will appear whenever there is a notification in your notification center. Because currently, the only way of telling if there's a notification is pulling down the notification center. So that'd be cool if Apple could add something in the status bar actually saying that you have a notification and telling you to look in your notification center. So the next feature I want to touch on right now is some keyboard improvements. So we're going to go over into the notes application. And uh, we're going to stay in portrait mode for now. Typing in landscape mode is actually very easy because when you're in landscape mode, the keyboard is pretty much a full screen keyboard uh, on the iPad. Now, on the iPad, typing in landscape mode can be very difficult uh, because, you know, you can't type like a full screen keyboard, but also typing like you're texting can be a little difficult because the screen size is just a little big. So, 
Uh, something that is cool that they have added is uh, undock and split. So right now the the keyboard is docked to the bottom of the screen, but you can now undock it and move it to wherever the heck you want. So you can move it to the top, you can leave it in the middle, and another welcome thing is split. So the keyboard will now split, which makes typing in portrait mode much easier. Uh, there is one pet peeve I have about this, and it is that this symbols button is really big. I don't know why it's so big, but it is big. It's much bigger than the space bar, and I always find myself, when I press the space over here, I'm accidentally pressing the symbol button. So, that is my one pet peeve about this that I think needs to be changed before the final release. Uh, but overall, I really do like this split feature, and everything will also work in landscape if you wish to type like this in landscape. And you can also move around the keyboard in landscape as well. And when you move back to the bottom, everything will go back to normal. So those are the keyboard improvements. Another welcome feature is Messages. So this is the Messages application right here. It comes pre-installed on all iOS 5 devices. So we'll just open it up. And it's basically like a text messaging client, except you can use it on other devices besides the iPhone. Now, you can only send messages to other iOS users, which I find uh, very dumb. I think uh, Apple will eventually evolve this app into a text-free application or something of that nature, where you can register a phone number and then you'll be able to send text messages not only to other iOS users, but also to other cell phones on other uh, devices, maybe like an Android device or basically any cell phone in the world capable of text messaging. So that is my view of what I think messages should eventually evolve into. Um, but for now, I think the Messages app is okay, and I think it could start kind of a revolutionary thing with text messaging, uh, breaking text messaging away from just cell phones and putting it on Wi-Fi only devices as well, because I think we'll eventually see text messaging come into devices like the iPad and the iPod Touch and maybe even computers. So there are some camera improvements that I would like to show you. So we'll head over into the camera application. Alright, so uh, here I am. Hi. And we're actually going to uh, switch into the back camera. And uh, these uh, things only work with the back camera and also only on camera, not video recorder. So we'll switch into that mode. And uh, first of all, you'll notice there is an options menu full of one option, and that is grid. So if you turn on the grid, there are little grid lines that appear everywhere, so you can kind of line up your shot. And it looks like Apple will be adding uh, more options into this menu, because it seems kind of weird to have an options menu with only one option. So uh, I think they'll be adding some more options uh, later in either later releases of the beta versions of iOS, or uh, maybe later iOS versions. And then there's also a pinch to zoom now. So uh, there you can see that better. I just pinch to zoom. Um, my only pet peeve around this is that it's extremely sensitive. Barely moving my fingers, I can go from zoomed all the way out to zoomed all the way in with just barely moving my fingers. So that is my pet peeve about the pinch to zoom. However, if they just fix that little thing, I think it could uh, be something very useful and make the zooming much easier. So if we head over into the photos application and just find a photo of something like this I forget what device that is but it's some kind of tablet <laughs> and we can now edit photos right from the device. So not only photos that you took with the camera but you can also edit photos that you saved from web pages or you uh, took screenshots, you can also edit those photos as well. And there's only four basic uh, photo editing options, but I think it's kind of cool, and I think eventually we're going to see some more options being thrown in uh, to kind of get rid of the need for a third-party application for photo editing. So we can rotate the photo. There's also an auto-enhance for the photo, which it didn't really do much there. Um, but then there's red eye. So you can tap red eyes and it will fix the red eye. 
And then there is also crop. So you can crop the photo any which way you want. There we go. So we could just like crop all that white space out if we wanted. And then, so there is our new photo. We can save it. And so there is our new photo. So there's another application that is built into all iOS devices that is new by Apple, and that is Reminders. So we'll just open up that. And here it is. Uh, it's basically just our Reminders application or a to-do list application. And my first impression of this was not another to-do list application. There's enough of those in the App Store, aren't there? But there is one feature that I can find extremely useful, and it just blew my mind when I heard about it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new reminder. Get some cheese. There's my reminder. And uh, the one feature that I just want to show you is this Remind Me. So here you can choose when to be reminded. Let me just zoom in on this. You can see a little better. So you can either remind on a day, which isn't anything necessarily new, but you can also remind at a location. So we'll just try that, and I'll try to get my current location. Uh, so you can either use your current location, or you can choose another address to be reminded at. And let me just exit out of that. And then you can also choose from that location uh, to be reminded when you leave or when you arrive, which I think will be extremely useful for a lot of people because you know you can set like uh, your grocery store and then say when you arrive it will remind you to get something that you would never remember to get or something like that. Or you can say uh, when I, next time I leave the house I want to go to the grocery store and pick this one thing up. So then you can set it for your house and then choose when you leave. Uh, so I think this is a very cool feature that I've never really seen before in any other application. And I think Apple did a good job at implementing that cool feature into um, an, an app that isn't so unique already. All right, so next I want to talk about some multitasking gestures. So multitasking gestures aren't really anything new. We've seen them in the beta versions of iOS 4.3, but they were thrown out in the final version. So Apple is now for sure going to include them uh, into the iPad. And so uh, let me just brush over what they are. Again, they're nothing new, but you can use four or five fingers with them. And you can swipe up. There it is to reveal the multitasking bar. Swipe back down to get it to go away. And inside of an application, you can pinch inwards to close the application. You can also swipe back and forth to switch between apps that are in your multitasking bar. So it's just going in the order uh, down here in your multitasking bar. And this is extremely nice uh, for switching between like two apps uh, that you're doing heavy multitasking in. So for example, if you were doing a report or writing of something and you had a web page open in Safari that you were getting your, your information from, which would be your source, and then you had your other applications, say Keynote, which you're using to write everything. Uh, then you can just easily, without having to double tap the home button and select it from your multitasking bar, just easily swipe to go between the two apps. So uh, that is a very cool feature. And also, um, I kind of like this pinch to zoom to close out of the app. And I think I'm getting a little spoiled with it because I rarely use the home button anymore. However, um, now that I don't use the home button, I don't want to use the sleep button anymore. So I wish there was a multitasking gesture to kind of sleep your iPad. I don't know what it would be. It'd probably be something crazy, but just something to make it go to sleep. So uh, a nudge to Apple. So the next thing that is uh, prevalent in iOS 5 is some improvements in Safari. So uh, the first thing you may notice is that we now have tabbed browsing. So let me just open up a couple websites. So we'll go to the gadget site here. Gadget site here. And we'll just open up a couple posts. There's one. And over here we'll open up another. 
And so uh, this tab browsing really isn't anything new with any other browser. It's just new uh, on the device. And you just easily switch between uh, two web pages basically instantly, which is a really nice. If I can tap on the tab, I'm trying to look at the camera. So here we are. So, uh, I mean, it works. And then you have some options in the settings for uh, when you open a new page, if it will open in a new tab and stuff like that or uh, if tabs will automatically uh, open in the background or if they will open above the window you were in. So I mean there are some options, it is customizable, you can move around your tabs which is nice. And then another thing that is cool is Reader. So if you tap the Reader button, what it actually does is it takes away all of that extra advertisements and pictures and it just leaves you with a beautiful looking article. And it also includes the pictures and it will also include video. Um, I know if I go to the other tab, there's a, all right, in this article, there's a video. And so if I go to Reader, it even includes the video, which I think is cool, that it automatically recognizes everything that is part of the article. And you can also make the text size bigger and smaller. Uh, so just for maximum pleasure when, when reading. And you, then you can just close out of it and get back to your regular view. And then another thing is the uh, read it later list. So uh, if you go to the share button, you can add to a reading list. And then when you go to your bookmarks, there's a reading list. And then you have uh, a list of websites that you saved that you can just easily go back and read later. And it's really cool because there may be websites that you don't necessarily want to bookmark, but you also don't just want to leave open. You just want to save them for a later time. So uh, that's a cool feature that they implemented there. My only uh, gripe about that is that it does not save the pages for offline viewing, which I think could be a very welcome feature one day, um, maybe for the next update or whatever. But for, uh, for now, I think I'm going to stick to using the Read It Later application from the App Store instead of the reading list. The next feature I want to talk about is, isn't necessarily a feature, it's just a little improvement um, that I really like and that is that you are able to use your device during a synchronization. So uh, while everything is being transferred to your device or to your computer, it uh, doesn't matter whether you're doing it through USB or over Wi-Fi, you are able to use your device. There's just a little icon up here uh, showing you that there is a synchronization going on. And so I think that's cool because uh, now with this over-the-air syncing, whenever you plug in your device, it's going to automatically try to sync. So not only plugging into the computer, but also plugging in just to a power source if you're using an adapter, uh, which comes with the iPad and the iPhone. And you can also buy an adapter for your iPod to plug it into a wall without having to plug it into a computer so you can charge it that way. So I think being able to use your device while it's syncing is very important now. And they've added that. And if you don't believe me, I have a pre-recorded video. So here it is. All right, guys, so just another a feature that I found in the uh, iOS 5. Uh, it looks like now you will be able to use your iOS device uh, while it is syncing with iTunes. So I'm actually doing a wired sync right here because um, I can't get the wireless to work now. I've heard reports that Apple did not include it in this beta version. This is the first beta version. So until they include that into the beta, I'm not going to be able to use that. So I'm doing traditional USB sync here, and uh, when I put on the beta, I had to do a restore, so it wiped everything off, and I have a boatload of apps to put on here. And as you can see, it says syncing apps to iPad, and I am able to use my iPad. You can see that it puts the app icons there. And it just looks like that you downloaded them from the App Store. And uh, it's also downloading or installing uh, two at once. So it's installing those two and then downloading that one. So I guess you could say three at once. I mean, so it's pretty cool. Uh, it's going really fast because it's, it's doing two apps, uh, sometimes three apps at once. And then there's this little icon up here. These uh, arrows that are moving around, showing you that it's syncing. So, like the iPad is syncing, and I'm still able to do everything. I can check my email. I can go to Safari and browse the web. All 
while the iPad is syncing. Okay, so there's a few improvements in the mail application, if we just head in there. Uh, so first of all, when you go to, when you're in portrait mode, when you go to all inboxes or just whatever uh, you want to open there, uh, the slider thing kind of just slides in from the left instead of hovering over. Um, so I, re I actually really like this. It's very minor, but I, I do like it because it seems like this panel here is now part of the mail application, whereas before it just seemed like a pop-up. So I do like that improvement. And also from here, you are now able to flag emails. So now a little flag has appeared there. So another welcomed improvement, you can now flag emails. And then when you are composing an email, if you type something, you now have formatting options. So we can select this, and then we can go to formatting. We can bold it, italicize it, or underline it. And then we can also uh, increase or decrease some indentation. A feature that was actually leaked before the uh, actual announcement is some Twitter integration. So if we go on into settings, we can go over to Twitter, and uh, here you can link your Twitter accounts and even install the Twitter application. And you can also uh, add a Twitter account, link it to a contact. So uh, it's some nice Twitter integration going on in there. And uh, Twitter will also integrate into so several applications, such as YouTube. We'll just demonstrate a few of these. So if we go to share, you can tweet a video. So there, you can type your tweet and then it'll attach the video. If we go to photos, we can tweet this photo. So there it attaches the photo. You can type your tweet. And uh, from Safari, when you're in a website, just click on share and tweet. It'll attach the website and we can type our tweet in. So uh, some nice Twitter integration in there. Um, one thing I would like to see is like Twitter push notifications where like from the settings or something, you can pull up who you're following and then choose like certain people that whenever they post a tweet, you'll get a push notification at the top. I think that would be very nice because there's like some followers that I always like to be informed of what is going on and what they're tweeting. So uh, that'd be something that I would definitely welcome into iOS. A real minor improvement in the calendar application. Uh, there is now like a lighter look uh, and feel and you also have a year view. So uh, really, again, like really minor uh, changes. Um, they change the skin a little bit and a year view on the iPad and then on the iPhone and iPod Touch uh, there is now a week view. And then uh, one more thing that I won't be uh, demonstrating but it is there. It is AirPlay mirroring. So uh, Apple kind of introduced mirroring uh, on the iPad 2 and it currently is only supported by the iPad 2 uh, through the HDMI out cable that you can purchase. And now this kind of goes along with Apple cutting the cables. You no longer need that HDMI cable if you have like an Apple TV. Uh, you can just stream your screen to your Apple TV or another AirPlay compatible device. Uh, so all wirelessly, no cable needed. So another thing is uh, over the air updates are now relevant. So if we go to general, there is now software update. And uh, right now it says the network is unavailable or too slow. That's kind of because there's a lot of things in iOS 5 that require outside servers. But because iOS 5 really hasn't been officially released, it's just been released to developers, a lot of those servers um, and whatnot aren't really working. So uh, right now it's not returning any results. But there is software update and it will update wirelessly. Again, cutting the cable. You do not need a computer to update. And then there is also iCloud integration uh, where you can uh, choose an iCloud account and then turn mail on, contacts, calendars, reminders, bookmarks, notes, and a photo stream, which is like photo syncing. Find my iPad, that is all inside of iCloud. Uh, the iCloud accounts are free and uh, basically they keep all of your iOS devices in synchronization with each other, uh, which is very nice. And you also get a free at me email address. And then you can also, like I said before in the beginning of the video, you can back up your device to iCloud. And you can also buy more storage, 
Uh, right now, um, it doesn't say what the storage options are because uh, it, it really isn't working. Like I said, a lot of the servers aren't up yet because iOS 5 hasn't really been officially released. So uh, right now, not much is known about iCloud uh, in terms of like pricing and stuff, but uh, there will be that integration in iOS 5. Okay, so that was uh, our little demonstration of iOS 5. This is beta 1, and the final version of iOS 5 uh, will hopefully be released by fall. Uh, that is according to Apple. So uh, stay tuned to thegadgetsite.com for all of your tech news and uh, all of your iOS news uh, to see what is going on in terms of iOS and in terms of any other gadget that is on the face of the earth.